What's up? It's Maytal. Today we are shooting a quick run through of my gear. This is like something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I actually did it once, but then Lior shot it really badly. So <laughs> we're doing it again. Kevin is here. Kevin is um, an audio engineer uh, expert. Well, you were nominated for a Grammy for mixing. Yeah, for, for a record that I mixed, yeah. Yeah, and Kevin doesn't mix my, um, my tracks, but he makes it sound awesome. Not that I'm taking credit away from George, who is doing a great job. Have you heard my recent videos? Oh yeah, he does great work. Yeah, but it helps when you tune everything just right, uh, which is something I am not good at. Everything sounds so much better. So today we're gonna kind of run through the audio gear, which uh, was a major upgrade that has happened how many months months ago? I want to say. Oh, it was. A half a year ago. Yeah, maybe six, eight months. Also, I don't know if you noticed, my rec system is super high, ridiculously high. It also doesn't match the color so it even sticks out more so I've been wanting to cut down the poles and today I have new poles and so Kevin is gonna help me put the new poles it's gonna look way more slick I'm very excited about that we're gonna put a shorter prettier pole in here I measured it I'm really proud that I actually did a good job So this is a DW Collectors series, a 333 shell configuration. Yeah. It's like uh, three layers of uh, ply. It's like the way that they, they put it together, it's in three plies. When I was thinking about this kit, I said I want it to be super warm and uh, super resonant and kind of like a gospel feel, but big and warm and punchy at the same time. So it was like, no reinforcing hoops. Actually, John Good helped me craft my kit, but then I changed my mind like 30 times since then. Okay, so it's a pure maple uh, with Paduk exotic wood finish. I don't know what the burst is. Do you know? Like maple burst or what do they call this color? And the sizes for this kit are 10, 12, 14, no. 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. 8 on 8 deep, 10 on 8 deep, and uh, um, 12 on 8, 14 on 14, 16 on 14. I could not have done this more slower and just foreign. <laughs> Like eight on eight, <laughs> but you get it, right? And uh, the snare, actually they made it the wrong size. This is not the size that I requested, but I ended up really liking it. The bass drum is uh, 18 inch deep on a 20 inch diameter, which I thought was the opposite. So Kevin was like, no, it's a uh, 20. So now I know. What else? Symbols? Okay, so this is like my favorite series and of course it was discontinued. I feel like every time I like, even in a restaurant when I really like something, they take it out of the menu. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like, it's my luck. Um, so I have the MB20 ride and then a custom pure alloy hi-hat. This is a new hi-hat that I just added. Uh, I have the MB21 right there on the couch. Uh, can you grab that, Kevin? Yeah. I can't say for sure that I prefer the custom pure alloy. This one is an old hi-hat that I have and I love it. So I kind of go back and forth on those. This is a 17 inch medium crash MB10. This is Bison 17 inch medium thin crash. Most of my crash symbols are 17 inch. Like a lot of people like different sizes for different sounds. I don't. I like different symbols for different sounds, but the size is the same. I just like how it feels. I had a 20 inch for the longest time here, a pure alloy, but I feel like for videos, it's just too much noise. For this room, it's just too much. So 
I went back. Uh, if you notice the Tesseract video, I think it has a 20 inch pure alloy crash and it's a little too washy. Like it's too much, I feel like. I don't know if it's the mix that did that, but I then decided no more. This one is a pure alloy custom. And uh, then I have an auxiliary hi-hat, which does not have a separate uh, pedal. A lot of people are asking about that. How do you call that arm? That's an, uh, I believe it's called an X-hat. X-hat? X yeah. This is a pure alloy, I think it's smaller. This one is a 14 and this one is a 15. Yeah, China. I always do a stack. I don't know, it's a little bit less noisy and more just condensed. And I make the stack from a Bison's 20 inch China and then on top of it, the Classics Custom 12 inch trash splash. It's very insulting. <laughs> Why are they named as trash? Uh, then I have a new stack that I am not fully sure how much I love it, but it's here for now. It's a Classics Custom 18 inch dark trash. This is like a legit stack. It's not something that I made up myself. So um, it's probably better if you go with something like that. And then I really, really love this splash. It's a Classics 10 inch China splash. And it's awesome. It's the only splash I like. So loud. Drums are so loud. You, it always shocks you when you hear it because I'm always with like a molded which is another piece that you should uh, learn about um, in your monitors like sometimes you would see comments from people that have no clue that are like oh this is fake she doesn't have headphones this is not accurate I do have, have headphones they're just molded and they're like inside my ears and they block the sound completely and then the the sound that I hear from my headphones comes from this amazing audio gear that Kevin, you know, he actually mixes it so it sounds amazing in my ears. I find that it's harder to get though at a live, like it's you're so dependent in a live show on the guy that's doing mix because you won't hear a thing unless it's coming from your in-ears and it's not ideal, I feel like, in shows, like it's like, the vocal sounds, everything sounds dry. It doesn't sound good. Like you hear a live band that's super raw and and you hear everything. But when it's with the in-ears, it's a mess. And you kind of just pray that <laughs> you'll hear what you need to hear. That's why I much prefer shooting videos for you guys, to be honest. My in-ears are future Sonics, but uh, I think it's time for... You told me you'll hook me up with a yeah. with a new brand, just because they're too old. One of them is popping out, and their customer service is. I don't want to say it on video, <laughs> but uh, they're a really good product, so I'll give them that much. Um, all right, so I play uh, DW nine thousand pedals i think it's 9002 but it doesn't say it on the pedal yeah 9002 is just because you play a double yeah i thought it's just like a newer version of it not yet that's the that's the what do they call that mdd yeah like the direct yeah, yeah. i don't want to mess with my pedals nah. they're awesome you know why fix what's not broken <laughs> and i like to flip the beaters i don't know do you do that i do the seat is one of my favorite seats. At first when they sent this to me, I was like, wow. Are they trying to say that I have a big butt? Like I do, but this is ridiculous. And then I ended up really loving it. It's like my own little uh, couch. And uh, then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the microphones and that's where Kevin's beautiful face will enter the scene. Kevin, Yeah. microphones. <laughs> it's, it's called a moon mic. Basically, it's a speaker, and when the speaker is wired backwards, it becomes a microphone. Wow. That's the simple explanation. This particular one's designed to pick up um, very low, like, frequency, frequency that you, you barely hear on this. So if you're a sound 
nerd like I am, then that's like 15 hertz up to 300. The low end and the that that big woof sound that you get from a kick drum when you're listening to a record, that's what this is. I usually stick it like no closer than about an inch. Uh -huh. And make sure it's not touching anything metal. And then this is the click or the point of your kick drum. So this goes inside. This microphone going in the geometry looks like that. So that it goes to this corner of the kick drum. So you get this mic will pick up the, the kick and also part of the shell. It's an AKG D112. Pretty common mic. You can find it pretty much anywhere. These are Neumann U87s, which are excellent microphones for... Are they usually uh, overheads or not so much? They're for vocalists, no? Uh, U87s were like utility microphones. So you could use them on pretty much anything. anything. They're great for overheads. Some people use them on guitar cabs. You can use them on horns. You can do all kinds of stuff. Those are a little on the high priced side. Yeah. So those are not cheap microphones, just so you're aware. Uh, rest of the kit, 57s on the snare, because that's one of the few go-to microphones you can put on a snare drum and the snare drum will sound like a snare drum. But when you go from this tiny one to this, that you, you were like, no, don't use this, and blah, you yeah. brought this in, it's like <laughs> a big, big change. Yeah, oh yeah. These are DPA, these little guys. These are super, I mean, they're, they're excellent microphones. You can use them toms like Maytel does. They also get used a lot, at least I have. I use them live for violins. They pick yeah. up everything. It has a lot of bleed from everything in yes. the kit. Yes, yes. So these are tricky. So you have to kind of balance what type of drummer you are. She's very balanced. When she hits stuff, it's even across the board. So when you dial these in, there's no fear of one day she's gonna be hitting the drums like an animal with no <laughs> control. She's always gonna hit pretty consistent, so we can use these. And then these on hi-hat and rides, I believe, these are, I know these are DPAs, but I believe they're called MMPs. And those are just cardioid. This one we do on the bottom of this hi-hat. This one in particular, we wanna keep the bleed from these cymbals down. Mm. So if this thing's under it, it's kind of shielded. You still get the attack of the hi-hat, mm. but we also get the ambience of the hi-hat with the overhead. These oh. used to be my overheads but now they've been demoted. <laughs> <laughs> so they got the really, really good ones. Yeah. All right, so last thing we wanted to talk to you guys about or show you is basically all the amazing audio gear that I got um, from zounds.com. They're an online what would you call it uh they have everything there they even have drum sets not only audio gear but just like everything. yeah they're like a music retailer a music yeah. retailer yeah. um and you can basically get all of this gear probably also drums and cymbals and whatever else you might need uh and they have amazing customer service and i really love these people so yeah, maybe you can kind of quickly show what is all of this doing. I know a lot of people do want to get better gear for videos. What is like one or two things that people can get that will really upgrade their sound? Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll do a, a, a real general. So this protects your power. This is like a surge protector, right? So plug all your gear into there. This protects it from anything, you know, power related that could damage your stuff. This is your interface, which if you're using Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton or however you're recording, that would, that's what you'll plug your, your software into, which will take your microphone preamps and convert them into audio into your computer. Um, all of these are all preamps, and preamps are all flavor. So depending on your budget, depending on the sound that you want, you can buy so many different things that it's never ending the thing they have to get yeah. or it's not gonna be possible is the interface yeah right? the, the interface is very very important because it connects software to analog gear you got to have this that's basically analog to digital into your software i've always had interfaces but this specific one is a lot better yeah. what is special about this one 
Um, this is Universal Audio, and these are some of the most high-end as far as interfaces are good. The Apollo is a really, really great unit. Now you can, obviously there's stuff that you can go above it, but as far as like consumer market, stuff that you want to get to make things sound exceptional, this is a great, great piece of hardware. So everything here is plugged to the interface. It is. And this is a universal audio uh, 6176 and it's a preamp? Yeah, so the, What is this connected to? So you have, you have this particular model, 6176, is because you have a, this is the preamp side and this is a compressor side. Okay. So this is a tube preamp and this is a 610. And essentially one microphone out of the entire kit can connect to that whole unit. Yeah, this one, this one's a pretty, this is a heavy duty piece of gear. This is, yeah. it's a really nice piece of gear. So we have uh, the kick drum. Okay. The, the, your, your main kick drum mic is connected to this because first we want big fat sound, right? Mm -hmm. Warm. And then second, we want a little bit of control. So we have the compressor on it. Okay, what's this? This is Rupert Neve. I've, I know that this is a fancy thing. Yeah, this, this is a really, really high end. This is a channel strip, right? So what that means is you have a preamp. Yeah. This one has an equalizer on it, so you can mess with tone. And then it also has a compressor on it. And it has a couple other fancy things that Rupert Neve does, but those and are the main things. And all of this also just goes for one microphone. Yeah, this is also just for one channel. And what did you connect to it? We have the snare on it. So, Makes sense. Yeah. Snare and bass drum are the most important, right? They, so you would use the best gear for those. To two, start, you know? yes. Yeah. And then, ah! <laughs> did you mix it using this... Uh, uh, unit? Like, are you make? Do, do you like listen and hit the snare and then do all the different channels to like equalize or whatever? Yeah, for this one, I did a little bit on there. There's not much, just a tiny bit in the EQ. Mm -hmm. And typically, it's only stuff that I'm hoping that our mix friend likes. I think he wanted me to remove the com compressor, yeah, maybe, on, from it. Possible. Yeah. But I like how it sounds, yeah. and it's going to change the sound in my ears, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one of those pieces of gear where you can use for anything. Is this a user-friendly, like, should they, someone just starting out? Because I don't know how to figure out how to eat, do that. This is, this is, it's not necessarily complex, but if you're just starting out, there's a, there's a, there's much simpler gear to use. Obviously, if you want to learn... Mm -hmm. and you have the money to buy these types of high-end pieces of gear and you want to learn on something like this, yeah. be my guest because, I mean, Cause this it's is a, the top. It's really good. It's really amazing. But if you don't know what you're doing, can it sound bad or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any piece of gear, if you don't know what you're doing, it can sound bad. Mm -hmm. I would start with something way more simple. Okay. So then, Anything from here that is really a good starting... Uh... Yes, which actually the warm audio stuff is a great starting point because they sound good. They emulate old preamps that were designed around drums and recording from, you know, history. So these ones in particular are from an API. But this is solid state or solid something. state. So it these are from a console um, from a company called API. And it's very simple. You have input, you know, so like your microphone gain and then you have output, which is how much of it you send to your converter and goes into your your computer. And the toms are plugged to this? Yeah, we have all the toms in there. How and many I, channels does this have? Uh, each one of these is four. Okay. So you could, a good way to start out is you could do, you know, kick and snare and say you have a hi-hat yeah. and maybe one overhead uh -huh. or maybe your ride or, you so know. So one of these could be a good place to start. Oh yeah, it would be great. And what about this? Mainly. Uh, this is also another very fancy piece of gear. This is tube as well. Uh, they're not crazy expensive compared to, say, these two, because you're only getting one channel in each one of yeah. these. But these you're getting four. So if you want to spend some money and you want to get four channels, these this is a, this is an amazing preamp as well. And there's a lot of fun little toys. Last thing that we did not mention is the headphone box. I was surprised to find out that this tiny thing is a huge 
piece yeah. in this whole thing. I had one that was like a cheaper version, you know, because I didn't have this in the beginning. Yeah. And nothing sounded good <laughs> till I got this. Yeah. You, I couldn't believe it. It's like such a small thing that you wouldn't think would make. It's literally just so you can plug in yep. your headphone. And I don't know how this makes everything sound a lot better. It's really, really nice components. Anything else that we're forgetting? I don't think so. We did a lot today. Hopefully it'll be interesting. I might be editing and I'll be like, oh my God, You're fall Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> fast forward, fast forward! But people requested this, yeah. so I'm hoping it'll be useful for some people. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and being here with me. And I'll see you soon. Bye!